Well, good morning. This is Chair Rena Moran, pursuit to House Rule 10.01. I call this remote meeting of the House Ways and Means Committee for April the 4th, 2022 to order. Uh, Ms. Anna, please take the roll for attendance. Chair Moran. Present. Vice Chair Olson. Present. Representative Garofalo. Representative Albright. Present. Representative Becker Finn. Present. Representative Bernardi. Representative Eklund. Present. Representative Hansen. Present. Representative Hassan. Representative Hertoffs. Representative Hornstein. Present. Representative Johnson. Present. Representative Kreeshaw. Kreeshaw, present. Representative Liebling. Representative Lilly. Lilly, present. Representative Mariani. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt, present. Representative Miller. Miller, present. Representative Nash. Present. Representative Nelson. Present. Representative Noor. Present. Representative O'Neill. Present. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, present. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, present. Representative Pinto. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, present. Representative Schultz. Schultz, present. Representative Scott. Present. Representative Sundin. Sundin, present. And Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, present. Garofalo, present. Representative Bernardi. Representative Hassan. Representative Hertas. Representative Liebling. Present. Representative Mariani. And Representative Pinto. Madam Chair, a quorum is present. All right, thank you. A quorum is present. So the next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our hearing on March the 21st. The minutes were included in the hearing documents emailed to you by committee staff. Are there any questions or concerns or corrections on the minutes? If not, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved, Madam Chair. Vice Chair Olson approves, um, moves approval of the minutes for March the 21st, 2022. Please unmute briefly for a voice vote. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion prevails and the minutes are approved. So members, we have a full agenda today. Uh, and I expect that we'll be able to complete them all during our regular time. Um, hopefully, um, we will not need to come back this evening. First up is Representative Hewitt uh, on House File 1888 regarding mortuary science. So, uh, Representative Hewitt. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Ways and Means Committee. Thank you for hearing this. Basically, what this bill is, is a uh, some of the uh, waivers that we use during COVID uh, in the funeral industry, which we would like to continue with. I'd like to thank Representative Schumacher for his work on the bill with me, as it, it did need some guardrails, and he was able to uh, reach out to the right stakeholders, and we were able to put them in. Um, however, today I think we're just talking about the fiscal ramifications of the bill. And I believe uh, Emily is here, or Joe are here to help me with that. This fiscal note was done like three times. So uh, I'm glad I think we got it right now. So if one of them could come forward and uh, explain the ramifications of the note. And before um, um, Ms. Adrian um, do that, Representative here, I just want to move that House, uh, I just want to state that House, we're going to move that House file 1888 be recommended for placement on the general register. All right, so let's do that real quick. 
And from there, uh, Mrs. Adrian, can you um, tell us a little bit about his house, um, um, the amendment H1888A4 amendment <laughs> that is before us? Um, I'm happy to, Madam Chair and members. Good morning. Um, so there is an amendment and a fiscal note. And what the amendment does is it reflects um, some of the changes that were needed in numbers. So the first item on uh, line two, this inserts, it fills in there's a blank amount for a fee. And so this just puts in the proper amount that's necessary for the fee. And then section 25, an appropriation is added. Um, the fiscal note showed that there is some FTE time required. And so that amount for the expenditure is $219,000 in fiscal year 23. And then ongoing, that amount is 132,000, I'm sorry, in fiscal year 24. And then in fiscal year 25, the amount is $61,000. Um, and so, and if you are looking at the fiscal note, um, the front page shows the net effect. So there are some revenues that will offset the expenditure amount. So um, in order for the agency to get the, um, the appropriate amount, the legislature needs to appropriate the requested expenditure and then the revenues will offset that as well. All right, thank you. So are there any questions on the A4 <clears throat> amendment? Seeing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. No. The, the motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. So Representative Hewitt has explained his amendment, um, his bill. Um, we've heard the, um, the amendment to the bill. Um, and so for today, as we all know, our focus would be on the fiscal impact of the bill. Um, are there any questions to the bill? Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Representative Hewitt, I've been hearing some concerns about this bill from um, the mortuary science people, the funeral directors. Have this amendment, does that bring it back into agreement with them or is there still um, big opposition across the state? Representative Hewitt. Um, to my knowledge, the opposition's dropped once uh, Representative Schumacher got involved and we were able to put some guardrails in. Basically, funeral homes do not have to use um, this service if they do not choose to. Um, they can use it. Many of them are using or going to use it. Many of them are looking for options. And so um, I think we're at peace with them. I don't know if the Funeral Directors Association is on here, but they uh, both the Funeral Directors Association and the um, uh, Institute of Justice are both in favor of the bill they testified in the committees before this and are in favor in the Senate also, they testified in favor of it. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Representative Garofalo. We cannot hear you, Representative Garofalo, and you seem to be unmuted. We'll come back to you, Representative Garofalo. Representative Liebling, Chair Liebling. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I just wanted to uh, thank Representative Hewitt. And uh, this bill went through the Health Committee, and we did, did work in the Health Committee on it. and. It is exactly as he says. This is a really good example of committees uh, really doing the work and bringing people together and coming up with a better product. And so this is a bipartisan bill that I think meets some needs. And uh, I'm glad the fiscal note was able to be worked out and just looking forward to seeing this pass. And uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Chair Liebling. Uh, Representative Garofalo, we could, I did hear you. You're muted now, but please. Go ahead. Representative Garofalo, you're muted. Madam Chair, can you hear me? I can hear you. Please okay. go ahead. I have, my apologies, uh, there's some tech issues going on here. 
so um and i apologize if in the dead space there i lost this but so to the author of the bill are there any stakeholders you have prepared to testify and committee today just to validate the peace in the valley nature of this bill or their opponents of the bill who wish to um voice concerns um we're getting mixed signals on the level of agreement uh, currently on this bill um first I, I would just say that usually in ways means when the focus is on the fiscal piece of it and all the testimony has been done in other um hearings we usually don't have testifies but i will um put some clear i will allow representative uh hewitt to respond to your question representative garofalo to maybe get some peace in the valley around your concerns representative hewitt uh, I'm really surprised the Funeral Directors Association didn't show up today, but as of yesterday and this morning, they supported it. So I don't know if they couldn't get on or what was going on, but there is support. Um, it does sound like maybe they're, I, I don't know what's going on, but for the most part, um, this was ran through them. This was, this is basically their bill. Um, my bill was totally different. And so um, they got their way. Plain and simple. So I, I don't know why there would be uh, problems right now, but uh, I know that they're in support of it. I had their permission to say that. So, okay. Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Hewitt. Are there other stakeholders and other groups that maybe we're getting concerns from on this? Again, normally, if we were in person, we could look out into an audience and someone could just give us a thumbs up or give us a wave and kind of explain that to us. but. Um, these invites for Zoom are not always, they're not, they're not really public. So I think that's sort of the confusion here. Uh, Representative Hewitt, um, have you heard of any concerns? Not since it made it through the health department. I, I'm sorry, through the health committee that I've heard anything. Um, a lot of people have had questions about it, thinking that it's going after licensing and stuff. It is not. So this is really the funeral director's bill. They, they're suffering. They don't have a way to get interns right now. You can't technically work in a funeral home or remove a body without a funeral director, and they just don't have enough. And so their workforce is suffering, and they know it. Um, and so they do have a problem. I know that there's a group that, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, nah, I, I, I guess I don't understand. Uh, what I understand is that they're in favor of it. Thank you. Okay, well, you represent Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Hewitt, again, nor this is one of the limitations of when we have committee hearings done remotely. Um, is there, are there anyone you can reach out to to have them zoom in to give, just to explain to us what the issue is? Again, we're getting, and Representative Hewitt, I appreciate you talking to me in advance of this, and I take you at your word, but usually we have, and it may not be this specific group, it may be a subset of the group or another group, um, is there any way we can solicit them or see if they're allowed to be on this call? Just to get Repres clarification before we vote. Yeah. So, uh, Representative Garofalo, um, it is my understanding what I'm hearing from Representative Hewitt that no one has contacted him. He has not received an email or a phone call. The, um, the mortuary folks are on in agreement with this. This is their bill. Um, it, it's clear to me that, you know, coming in here with the amendment that folks are in agreement. I don't know what's happening before the amendment uh, came onto the bill, but it seems pretty clear that they are um, aligned in support of the bill. And Madam Chair, I, res I respect that. And again, normally, you know, when, when we have a publicly noticed meeting, we can look out in the crowd and say, well, they didn't show up. That's their deal. We can take the author at that. We don't need to verify it, but in a virtual environment, if there's a group trying to get into the Zoom meeting and they're trying to offer testimony and they're not allowed in, we don't know that. So that's that's why I'm just trying to get clarify clarification if if Representative um, Hewitt or someone can just get someone to generate an email or if we can let them into the call just to clarify because we are getting mixed signals on this bill. And absent that clarification, maybe I'll be end up voting no on a bill that there's no reason for me to be voting no on today. That's the only. It's it's up to you, Madam Chair. But this is the this is yet again one of the problems with us all sitting at home on Zoom. So, if we could get clarification on that, that would be either an email or just some sort of positive acknowledgement from stakeholders. 
or a complaint from one of the stakeholders, that would be good to know. We don't know if people are not able to get into the Zoom meeting right now or if they're just making a choice to not be here. Madam Chair? Yes, Miss um, uh, Conley. Nancy Conley. Um, I just got a text from somebody who I sent the link to before but can't get in. So if you just maybe put this on pause or move to the next bill and come back to it, uh, uh, we can get that set up. All right, thank you so much. Representative thank Chair Liebling. Thank you, Ms. Conley. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I think I could maybe add something a little bit to this, just explaining our process, because this is a licensing bill. And members may know we had an extensive process to try to encourage uh, for transparency sake around all of the uh, licensing and scope of practice bills. So we required, as has been done in the past by both parties, by the way, we required that anybody with one of these bills fill out a pretty extensive questionnaire, which we then posted on our committee website. And the purpose of this, one of the purposes of it was to give the public an opportunity to see it because these are often contentious issues with a lot of ins and outs and to allow people to come forward. And then from those many, I think we got about 20 of them, this was one, we, we had um, decided which ones were ready for hearing. So this one got a hearing. In fact, it got two hearings because it got a first hearing, it was laid over. There was discussion, there were people there who had some concerns with it as Representative Hewitt said. And then he worked with Representative Schumacher and, and with the parties and he did a lot of work on this bill and then came back with the bill that had agreement around it, which we then passed out a committee. And the only piece that wasn't quite settled was the fiscal note. So I, I you know, the, the idea that this is um, because we're virtual that we don't know what's going on is not correct. There is plenty of opportunity and has been for people to contact us by email, by text, by phone calls, by all the normal ways. And um, it's nice if we have somebody here to verify, but I, I really think it's problematic if we don't take the word of a member saying that the member has not heard any dissent. And I wanna say here too, that I myself have not received any dissent since the bill passed out of committee. So, you know, I, I realize there can always be somebody who comes and has a concern at a late hour that can always happen, but you know, they're, they're also, this, this virtual environment, I think, has worked pretty well. And yes, there are some issues where someone can't just walk in the door. I, you know, I realize that can be a little bit problematic, not saying you're wrong about that, Representative Garofalo, but, you know, I just think that it, it comes a little close here to questioning the, the uh, credibility of a member. And I have to say that I have found Representative Hewitt to be a, an extremely honorable member who would never state something that he knew to be false. So um, that's been my total experience with him over the time I've known him. And I, I really think we get on thin ice when we start to say that a member might not be completely telling the truth about something as clear as this. So, you know, let's let's not go there. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Chair Lieben. Representative Nash. Thank you, Madam Chair. I too have heard honestly mixed messages about this in the time that it was introduced in the time since the uh, questionnaire was posted and in as recently as a week ago. I understand that that DEs change things and amendments change things, but I, I really would appreciate hearing from somebody that this is indeed a, a bill that they can support. I'm not questioning Representative Hewitt's motives, intents, or the veracity of his statements, but because I put a lot of value behind uh, my vote, I would have to vote no as of today. And uh, if this is indeed something that has achieved peace in the Valley, I, I'd like to hear from somebody who represents those that have reached out to me to let me know that their fears and concerns have been allayed. So thank you, Madam Chair. All right, I see a bunch of hands flying up. So we're going to put Joe Selwood on, um, let him um, come before the body to share um, with us where we are on this bill. Um, Mr. Selwood. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Joe Selwood uh, with Cook Gerard Associates, and we represent the Minnesota Funeral Directors Association. Um, and just a 
back up to the beginning of session, the original House File 1888, uh, which did permit much more and, and did not have the guardrails that this bill has, we were opposed to. Uh, once we were able to work with the author, uh, Representative Hewitt, other stakeholders, and uh, Representative Schumacher, we did uh, put forth, uh, with Representative Hewitt's help, the DE that went on a couple weeks ago in the Health Committee, which we do support. Uh, and that deals just with the unlicensed removals, uh, creates the transfer care specialists. We. Uh, so just to be very clear, uh, the association supports supports this. We have uh, more than 600 members and we represent more than 200 funeral establishments. There are some who feel that it goes too far uh, in, in licensing and there are some who feel that it doesn't go far enough. But overall, our, our membership is very supportive of this, uh, particularly that it's needed in greater Minnesota where they're not getting enough funeral directors to to do these tasks. We did, uh, the association did partner with the uh, University of Minnesota uh, Mortuary Science School and uh, helped to work on a survey that was sent out to all licensed funeral directors in the state. And they did receive uh, almost 400 responses on that. And 59% were supportive of uh, exploring this option um, once certain guardrails were put on it, like uh, requiring a supervising licensee uh, and making the removal to a funeral establishment, those uh, those numbers went up. So it, it, it in the past, this has been a very contentious uh, issue where there's strong opinions on each side. Um, but now uh, with this bill, the Funeral Directors Association does support it. Thank you so much, Mr. Selway. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Representative Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Mr. Selway, for that answer. Um, I, I do want to comment that, you know, it's, it's a great honor to serve on this committee. Not a lot of people get to do it, particularly when you're not, um, not a chair. Uh, in the minority, we have an incredible responsibility because this information is just not fed to us willingly and forthrightly all the time. And I understand the dynamics of a majority minority relationship, but that does not excuse that the minority means nothing in this process. And while it's a great honor for me to be on this committee, I therefore have a great responsibility. And I have no reason to question the veracity of Representative Hewitt but if I have a question and the response is you just need to take the you just need to take the word of the of the uh, of the representative, then why do we even have this committee? Because we all know it's going to be passed in the committee. We all know it's going to be passed on the floor and it's going to move on and on. So why does the rank and file even show up for any of this stuff? Because we just know the way that it's going to go anyway, and we should just trust the people that know what they're doing and move on. That's irresponsible to the people of my district. That's irresponsible to the people that helped me work hard to not only get here, but move up the food chain to get to the Ways and Means, the most important committee. Now, I understand that if we're in a junior committee and there is um, some questions to things, we can always say, well, we'll find out at the next stop. Good question. We'll find out at the next stop. This is the next stop. We can't have testimony on the House floor. And so, Madam Chair, I respect the way you have this committee, but I don't like being told that I just need to be quiet and trust the people that are saying these things because we wouldn't have moved forward if it wasn't okay to begin with. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Miller. I do hear you. And I hope uh, having um, you heard, having you heard from um, Mr. Selwood that that uh, will be helpful in your decision-making process. Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Representative Hewitt, uh, Representative Selwood, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, I don't know what the tech issues we're getting in, but I'm glad you were able to resolve it. Um, you know, I do think it's important that we verify what Representative Hewitt is saying. Uh, I want to trust him, I want to believe him, but I heard he likes Nickelback. And so whenever I hear someone of those opinions listening to a band like that, I have to, I have to question his judgment. I'm kidding, of course. But uh, Representative Hewitt, I want to thank you for coming to me last week uh, and speaking with me in advance of this bill. And thank you for wanting to testify. Uh, based on the testimony we've had, I'll be voting yes on this today. And uh, thanks again for bringing this bill forward. Thank you, Representative Buffalo. 
So with that, uh, are there, I don't see any other questions. But just for insurance, I want to make sure that I move House File 1888 that will be recommended for placement on the general register. Just for clarity, I want to make sure that... Um, as amended, Madam Chair. As amended. Thank you. So, um, so seeing no further um, discussion, Representative Hewitt, any closing comment? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you all members. I understand your jobs and I understand what you're doing and I totally respect that. I would ask for a yes vote on the bill. Thank you. Okay, so the motion before us is that House File 1888 as amended be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Anna, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Aye. Chair Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Vice Chair Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. Raffalo, aye. Raffalo, aye. Representative Albright. Albright, aye. Albright, aye. Representative Becker Finn. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eckland. Aye. Eckland, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hertas. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson. No. Johnson, no. Representative Krisha. Krisha, no. Krisha, no. Representative Liebling. Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Mariani. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, aye. Miller, aye. Representative Nash. Nash, no. Nash, no. Representative Nelson. Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor. Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto. <clears throat> Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott. Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin. Sundin votes aye. Sundin, aye. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Hertaus. Representative Mariani. And Representative Pinto. Madam Chair, that is 20 ayes and six nays. So there have been 20 ayes and six nays. The motion prevails. House file 1888 as amended is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you so much, Representative Hewitt. So members, the next bill is from Representative Morrison regarding physicians and acupuncture licensures that also came to us from um, the Health Finance and Policy Committee. To get it before the committee, the chair moves that House File 3631 be recommended for placement on the general register. Welcome to the committee, Representative Morrison. Thank Please. you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. So please tell us about your bill with a focus on the fiscal impact. Okay, M Madam Chair and members, House File 3631 makes technical corrections and updates some language for the Board of Medical Practice. Specifically in the Medical Practice Act, it makes changes, it makes the following changes to Chapter 147. It amends sections of the Medical Practice Act to update references to osteopathic physician organizations and examinations. It clarifies examination attempts and authorizes acceptance of the comprehensive osteopathic medical variable purpose examination. Um, in the Acupuncture Practice Act, the bill makes the following changes to Chapter 147B. It removes the requirement for a notarized copy and replaces it with a requirement for evidence satisfactory to the Board um, of Current Certification. And finally, it repeals sections of Minnesota rules related to professional corporations as those rules were made obsolete by passage of the Professional Firms Act. 
uh, this bill has no longer has fiscal impact to the general fund because it was amended in the health committee. And that Madam Chair members is the bill. Thank you. Um, so there was no amendment um, that were pre filed. Um, and there is a complete fiscal note that was provided for everyone referenced. So is there any questions of the author? Seeing no further discussion. Madam Chair, Representative yes. O'Neill has our hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Representative O'Neill. Go ahead, Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm wondering if the author of the bill could explain about the civil penalties. I realize that there's not a general fund impact, but it looks like there is some change or clarification or something to civil penalties. If she could address that financial change. Uh, Representative Morrison. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative O'Neill. Uh, those impacts are no longer relevant because of the amendment in the Health Committee. Representative O'Neill. So the change, there is no change in civil penalty. Uh, in my notes, it says that not to exceed 10,000 for a civil penalty that the board could impose. That doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Representative Morrison. Madam Chair and Representative O'Neill, that's correct. Representative O'Neill, so Representative O'Neill, there, there's a, the fiscal note reflects potential revenue of about 15,000, right? And this is based on the assumption of potentially having five civil cases averaging about $3,000 uh, each. And so we don't know what the number would be. It could be less, it could be more, but this is keeping with our customer reviewing bills that may have an impact over 3,000. Is that helpful for you, Representative O'Neill? Uh, a little bit, I'm just wondering, uh, is this an, a new civil penalty that the board can impose upon doctors or is this existing civil penalty that they could impose? Okay, I'm gonna allow this to be the last question if it, if it doesn't reference the fiscal note piece of the bill. We're gonna move forward. Uh, Representative Morrison. Madam Chair and Representative O'Neill, that reflects the amendment that was put on the health committee there is no new civil penalty um in this current bill there is none representative o'neill okay thank you all right thank you um representative garofalo uh, thank you madam chair and to the author so the fiscal note that's posted on the house website reads the board of medical practice estimates that under the added authority to impose a civil penalty it may collect five civil penalties of $3,000 annually for a note of $15,000. If, if that's obsolete, then why is this bill in the subcommittee? Uh, Representative Graffalo, well, one of the reasons why this bill is before us is that we see that it, it could, you know, that keeping with the custom of reviewing bills that could have an impact over $3,000, it is the prerogative of the chair, myself, to have bills come to this committee to be heard. Miss um, uh, Conley. Madam Chair, I think there's confusion. When we okay. were scheduling bills, we were, the information we had at the time was that the fiscal note that we had is correct. There was subsequent action to that that as Representative Morrison indicated, that removed that section. So apparently the fiscal note we had was not updated to reflect that. So um, I guess if we have additional questions, it would be appropriate for Mr. Harney to respond with the fiscal analysis department. Representative Garofalo, would you like our fiscal person to respond to your question? Yeah, I just, I'm just trying to figure out why this bill is here, if that section has been removed. Okay, uh, to a fiscal analysis. Uh, Chair Moran, Representative Garofalo, uh, Ms. Conley is correct in your characterization of, of why it was scheduled um, and putting together the, the committee schedule uh, uh, back when the fiscal note was completed prior to it getting amended. There was a cost that is no longer in the bill now. Representative Garofalo. Okay, so... Madam Chair, why is this bill here? So again, you know, um, one of the things is that 
we don't know is that the numbers will be or could be less or it could be more, right? Even though the fiscal note has been removed that we've heard several times before we knew that we requested the bill to come back to ways and means. And so because of that, the bill is before us. Well, but there is, is, but according to what we're hearing now, according to what we are hearing now, Representative Garofalo and members, is that the amendment removed that. There is no fiscal impact, which is great. Okay. You know, sometimes we just... I, I respect the fact the fiscal notes from a month ago. I understand that the committee before us stripped out the fiscal impact. I respect that. I'm just trying to figure out why this bill out of its committee was moved to here if there's no fiscal impact. That's fine. We don't need to, we don't need to talk about it anymore. I just, okay, thank you. Thank you. Represent Chair Leadling. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Maybe we don't have to talk about it anymore. I was just yes. going to say, since it came from my, I think this came right from my committee. It, it did. The point is that if we're not sure if it's going to have fiscal impact, and we feel it it's going to send it here then to the floor. And then we have two choices. We can either vote it out of this committee to the floor, or I suppose there could be a referral on the floor, which seems very cumbersome since the bill is here. So I, I hope that added something. Chair Lee, I think that brought a little bit more clarity about why it's here. So seeing no further discussion, uh, any closing comment, uh, Representative Morrison? Thank you, Madam Chair and members. I appreciate your consideration of the bill. Thank you. So the motion before us is that House File 3631 be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Anna, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Uh, aye. Moran, aye. Representative Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright. Albright, no. Albright, no. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eklund. Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hurtas. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson. No. Johnson, no. Representative Grisha. Representative Liebling. Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Mariani, excuse. Representative Marcourt. Marcourt, aye. Marcourt, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash. No. Nash, no. Representative Nelson. Nelson, aye. Nelson, I. Representative Noor. Noor, I. Noor, I. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, I. Pulowski, I. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto. Pinto, I. Pinto, I. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Representative Schultz. Schultz, I. Schultz, I. Representative Scott. Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin. Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. Representative Hurtas. And Representative Krisha. Uh, Madam Chair, that is 17 ayes and nine nays. There have been 17 ayes and nine nays. The motion prevails in House File 3631 is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you so much, Representative Morrison, for stopping by. You, so, Mayor, yes. So, the next bill is House File 3560 regarding, yes, come from Representative Herb regarding Dennis licensure by Representative Herb. The bill came to us from, again, from a Health Finance and Policy Committee. And so, the chair moves that House File 3560 be recommended for placement on the general register. Welcome to the committee, Representative Herr. I understand that there's also an author's amendment to reflect the updated fiscal note. And so I will move the A3 amendment for you. 
uh, please explain the amendment to us. Thank you, Madam Chair and Committee. The amendment is just to add a $3,000 uh, one-time appropriation for 2023. Um, it is for costs related to administrative fines and new credential uh, application process. Okay. Are there any questions on the A3 amendment? Seeing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Representative Herb, please tell us about your bill as amended with a focus on the fiscal impact. Madam Chair and Committee, this is actually a really um, simple bill. It's technical, it's bipartisan support, and it actually just is updating our dental therapy license um, process uh, so that those who move out of state with a license already is able to move into that. It also updates the fees. There's no additional new fees being charged to individuals uh, uh, going through this pathway and also um, looking for other types of uh, licensure around dentistry in uh, Minnesota. The, uh, the fiscal note is actually for... Um, uh, you know, the as I, when we mentioned in the the board of dentistry is actually taking on ten thousand, absorbing ten thousand of the fiscal note cost, and uh, three thousand dollars is what they're asking from the state, and so um, that is actually sort of just uh, the an overview of the bill and the cost that will be associated with it. Thank you so much, Representative Herb. Uh, so there's no other amendments that were pre-filed. Uh, a fiscal note was also posted for reference. It has uh, impact on state government special revenue funds and some absorbed costs, as Representative Hurd just stated. Are there any questions? Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to the author, in the fiscal note they reference, there's a section called the fee section where they talk about that it adds a fee for a license by credential for dental therapy, and then it says it removes some fees that we do not charge. Do you know what are those fees that we're removing that are, what are the fees that are being removed? Representative Her. Representative Graf, I, I could only hear a little portion of your, your question. Um, and so I and I will just state that in the original, and I'm going to pull the, the bill itself up because the information is uh, actually in there. So there are some fees that have been charged in the past for administrative things that they no longer like it's no longer an option anymore. And so those are the fees that are just getting uh, they're getting rid of it's in the current fees that are needed in order to obtain licensure. Those remain the same and there are no additional costs. Okay. Madam Chair, Representative Representative my apologies. I'm having some technology mm -hmm. issues on my laptop today. I'm sorry. Yeah. So can you hear me okay now or not? Yes, I can hear you, Representative Garofalo. Okay, thank you. And so, Rep so Representative, for the, the new fee that's being created uh, under the fee section of the fiscal note, is that less than or more than the fees that are being removed? So, Representative Her, I'm going to allow, uh, I believe, Bridget Anderson, who's on call, can respond to that question. Uh, Ms. Anderson. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, thank you. I did want to just make note that the fee that we're removing is for a miniature license um, that we typically would charge. One moment. Sorry, I got a kiddo back here. That's hey, it's, there's a toy going okay. off in the it's background. Definitely. I apologize, my little nieces uh, here, but um, yeah. So we, what we're we're removing it because we do not charge for the fee um, for our volunteers. So we used to charge that years ago to have this little uh, miniature license that they had to bring to, for instance, like volunteer events. We do not charge for that anymore. Um, so we just want it removed so that'll be reflected uh, in the statutory language. The guest license that you see that's added there, that's not an added charge. It's just from another section of statute. So what we're doing is making sure that it's all aligned in the same place. Um, and then what was the other, the other, uh, excuse me, um, Representative Garofalo, what was the other question that you had regarding um, the fees being added versus being removed? Is that what you were asking about license fees? Representative Garofalo. Uh, Madam Chair and, and Ms. Anderson, so going off the fiscal note, it says that it adds a fee for the license by credential for dental therapy, but then it also says that it removes some fees that we do not charge. And my question was, is that were the fees being removed, are those greater than or less than the, new, the, the fee that we are charging? Um, on the fiscal note itself, uh, it... And I, I'm probably misreading it, but I can't really 
that's why I wanted clarification is that basically the fees that are being added, are they greater than or less than the fees that are being removed? Um, uh, Ms. Anderson. And, yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Representative Garofalo. So technically it would be more. I mean, the fee being added for license by credential for dental therapy is a brand new license. So that fee is um, you know, being added. These ones that are being removed are for smaller fees, as I suggested for like the miniature license, volunteer license and so forth. Gotcha. That's 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 and Madam Chair, Ms. Anderson, that was my understanding as well. I just wanted clarification on that. So thank you very much for clarifying that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. Are there any other questions? Okay. So Representative Her, any closing comments? Um, just uh, thank you for hearing the bill and for the support. Okay. So the motion before us, member, is that House File 3560, as amended, be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Anna, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright. Albright, no. Albright, no. Representative Parker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Okay, someone, can, can we mute uh, everyone? Okay, thank you. Representative Eklund. Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Representative Hurtas. At the end of last year. Hurtas, no. Hurtas, no. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson? No. Johnson, no. Representative Creshaw? Creshaw, no. Creshaw, no. Representative Liebling? Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly? Representative Mariani, excuse. Representative Marcourt? I don't have a Marcourt, aye. Marcourt, aye. Representative Miller? Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash? No. Nash, no. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto? Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher? No. Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Representative Schultz? No. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott? Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin? Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. Representative Hassan? Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. So, and Representative Lilly? Aye. Lilly, aye. Yeah. Lilly, aye. Uh, Madam Chair, that is 17 ayes and 11 nays. There have been 17 ayes and 11 nays. The motion prevails in House File 3560 as amended is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you, Representative Her. So, members, um, I, I just want to say that, you know, we have been doing this virtual uh, meeting for a while. And I am happy to say that after break, we will be meeting in person. And I know some of us may be a little bit tired and, and maybe forgetting to mute. But it's really important that we, if we're not speaking, that we remember to mute ourselves so that we can alleviate the background noises. Um, and so I would appreciate that so much. The next bill is House File 961 by Chair Eklund. The bill was heard in multiple committees before coming to us from Labor, Industry, and the Military and Veteran Affairs Finance and Policy Committee. Chair Eklund, would you like to move the bill and tell us about the fiscal impact? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Chair, I move House File 961 be recommended for placement on the general register. And Madam Chair, I'd also like to move the H0961A12 amendment to get the bill in the shape I'd like to present it. All right. Um, can you please explain the bill? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The amendment's uh, pretty simple. This is not a this is not a forced organizing uh, bill. Um, this is a if if the, some of the folks that are in the middle management. Uh, Groups do not want to 
move into this uh, supervisor's organizing unit, they can choose to stay, stay where they want. And then the other part of the amendment is the appropriation, Madam Chair. It's uh, 128000 for fiscal year 2023 20, uh, and uh, $24,000 in the tails. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions to the A12 amendment? Seeing no further questions, all those in favor of the A12 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Chair Eklund, please continue with your presentation on House File 961 as amended with a focus on the fiscal note. Chair Eklund, you have any? You are mute. I am. I, we should get used to this someday, Madam Chair. Anyway, um, Hopefully we don't have to. Anyway, this affects 125 supervisory members in the, in the law enforcement world that are looking to form their own bargaining unit. What's happening is they're falling behind in pay and benefits compared to what's happening in their in their city and, and uh, uh, municipal uh, groups. So it's a pretty simple bill, Madam, Madam Chair members. Okay, since there was no other amendments pre-file, a fiscal note was also posted for your reference. Uh, any Representative Garofalo? Thank you, Madam Chair, Representative Eklund. Thank you for adopting the amendment uh, that makes this a voluntary association, not a first one. Uh, I'll be voting yesterday on this bill, and thank you for uh, um, again, thank you for your work, Representative Eklund. It is uh, it is appreciated. One thing I do want to dispute with you, Representative Eklund, I, I I never want to get used to this. I want us to be done with these Zoom committee hearings. Uh, I want us back in person, and there's no reason we shouldn't be. So I I will be voting for your bill, Representative Eklund, but I do disagree with you on that. Uh, we. We should be done with this. So yeah. thanks. We're getting there. We're, we're getting there, uh, Representative Garofalo. Um, are there any other questions? Seeing no further discussion, any closing comments, uh, Rep uh, Chair Eklund? Thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Garofalo. If you want, both my committees on Tuesday and Thursday will be live in room 120, so you can come and watch if you would care to at 3 o'clock. But uh, it's a good bill, Madam Chair, and, and I hope members will support it. Thank you. So, Chair Eklund, motion before us is that House File 961, as amended, be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Anna, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright. Albright, aye. Albright, aye. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eklund? Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen? Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan? Representative Hurtas? Hurtas, aye. Hurtas, aye. Representative Hornstein? Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson? Aye. Johnson, aye. Representative Krisha? Representative Liebling? Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative no, Lilly? No. Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Present. Representative Mariani, excused. Representative Marcourt? Marcourt, aye. Marcourt, aye. Representative Miller? Miller, aye. Miller, aye. Representative Nash? Nash, aye. Nash, aye. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, aye. O'Neill, aye. Representative Pulaski. Pulaski, aye. Pulaski, aye. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Pinto. Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott. Aye. I'm sorry. Representative Scott, one more time. Aye. Scott, aye. Representative Sundin. Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. Representative Hassan. And Representative Krisha. Krisha, aye. Krisha, aye. Madam Chair, that is 27 ayes and no nays. There have been 27 aye and zero nays. The motion prevails in House File 961 as amended is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you, Chair Eklund.
So the next bill is House File 4265 by Vice Chair Olson regarding opioid settlement funds. The bill was heard in fin have finance and referred to us from Judiciary Finance and Civil Law. Vice Chair Olson, please move your bill and begin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So I move House File 4265, and I do have the A3 amendment as well. Uh, could you? Okay. Yeah. Should I move the amendment to A3 you, right away? Yes. Why don't we? Okay, great. So I also move the A3 amendment, Madam Chair. All right. Um, can you explain the A3 amendment to us, please? Sure, Madam Chair. So the A3 amendment uh, appropriates funds necessary to uh, to DHS. They're going to be because of the settlement funds, which I'll discuss when we talk about the bill. There will be more money coming into the state of Minnesota to appropriate out to the opioid response. So the uh, amendment appropriates money to DHS to be able to administer those grants. And so that amendment is 209,000 in fiscal year 2023 and 239,000 in fiscal year 2024 and subsequent fiscal years. Okay, so are there any questions on the A3 amendment? Seeing no questions, all those in favor of the A3 amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. The motion prevails and an amendment is adopted. Vice Chair Olson, please continue with your presentation of House File 4265 as amended. Thank you, Madam Chair. So last summer, Minnesota signed on to the National Opioid Settlement and Minnesota is expected to re receive nearly 300 million in funds. The complex settlement requires states to come to agreement with local governments on certain terms. So the Office of Collaboration and Dispute Resolution convened various stakeholders who work together to reach an agreement on the funding distribution. So the agreement calls for counties and cities to receive 75% of the settlement funds and 25 to go to the state. And so in order to receive these funds and to be able to work to get them out to fight the opioid epidemic, uh, we needed to put a few things, uh, make legislative changes, which are reflected in House File 4265, which includes implementing the 75-25 split, releasing funds, and uh, ensuring a claims bar. And then I already described the amendment, which we adopted. So that is the entirety of the bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Chair Olson. So, uh, members, there was no other amendments pre filed and a fiscal note was posted for the reference. Uh, we have Representative Garofalo with a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Representative Olson, in the original underlying bill, there was a cap that said that settlements would be reduced from fee, that if settlement dollars we received would reduce the aggregate amount of fees over the lifetime of them. So, that would make the fees sunset. My first question is, is that is that changed at all in this bill? Vice Chair Olson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and thank you, Representative Garofalo. So that was another change that is in this legislation as well, is when we set the settlement or the, the fees to not sunset completely, but to be a reduced level. We had said there would be 250 million in collected through settlement into state funds, but we didn't define what state meant. So what we have done here is said that those, that sunset would have a set date, that it would start to take place so that we're, and essentially meaning that by then the state will have reached the 250, 250 million, whether that be entirety into the state or some going to the local governments as like this settlement had. Mm -hmm. And okay. so, Madam Chair, Representative Garofalo. So, mm -hmm. the, this would, these settlement funds would have the net effect of sunsetting or reducing the existing fees in law. They, that they, I don't want to say we give them credit for it because that's not the right way to say it. But do I have that correctly? Do I say that correctly? Vice Chair Olson. Um, yes. Yeah. So, in the original bill, we agreed to sunset the higher fees on the opioid manufacturers once the state had received, which we felt like was a significant amount, which we defined as 250 million. And, but again, because we didn't define what state meant and some goes to local governments and some actually comes directly into the state, we need to just, we need to further clarify that, which we have done in this House File 4265. Super, Madam Representative Chair. Thank you, um, Madam Chair, Representative Olson. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be voting. Uh, once again, I want to thank you as well as Representative Baker and Senator Rosen for all the work you guys have put in uh, on this, you know, what is an opioid crisis. 
Um, so I'll be voting yes on this bill today. I respect the fact that there may be a diversity of opinion on my side of the aisle, but I do want to specifically again thank you, Representative Baker and Senator Rosen for all the work you guys have put in. Um, this industry does need to be held accountable and they're being held accountable and these resources will help uh, reduce the amount of destruction that the, this, um, that the opioid industry's products have caused in our society. So thank you again. Okay, Representative Miller. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and my question really is in line with what Representative Groflo said, but I may be asking it in more layman's terms, uh, Chair Olson. So if you can clarify this for me, I would appreciate it. Uh, when we originally passed the fee increases or the fees, if you will, the taxes on opioids, it was discussed that when the settlement comes in, that settlement is going to offset those those fees or those taxes on the opioids. So is it the same that it was before where it's offsetting? And I, I know that you said, well, we didn't clearly define between state, local and whatever. I just wanna know that that original law was basically the way I read it. It is if the, in layman's terms, if the, uh, if the settlement comes in and pays the bill, then we're gonna remove those fees. Is that what's happening here or has that changed? Vice Chair Olson. Right, yep. Great question, Representative Miller. Thanks, Chair Moran. So we, as bill authors, myself, Senator Rosen, Representative Baker, and Representative Eaton, when we worked to uh, put House File 4265, we wanted to honor the work we did in House File 400. And so it is the same. We didn't renegotiate the settlement or the sunset. It is just clarifying that. So essentially what we have done in this legislation is say those fees will sunset in 2031, which is when the state and local governments in cumulative will have reached 250 million. So it is the same spirit as was in House File 400, but just with further definition. Representative Miller. Uh, that's okay, Madam Chair. I hope to, uh, I'm gonna have to investigate this and understand it further here in the future because uh, Representative Olson, I know you're forthright and straightforward with this, so I don't feel like you're giving me the runaround, but I also don't think that I got the answer. So that's gonna be on me. I'm just going to have to figure this out more uh, before it gets to the house floor. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions? All right, seeing no further discussion. Uh, any closing comments, uh, Vice Chair Olson? Uh, thank you, members, and I just want to say thanks to the Attorney General's office, um, the counties, all of the stakeholders, everybody that worked hard to get to this agreement, and to Representative Baker, who usually co-presents this bill with me, uh, for getting to a place where we are, and just ask for member support. All right. So Vice Chair Olson, motion before us is that House File 4265, as amended, be recommended for placement on the General Register. Ms. Anna, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright. Albright, aye. Albright, aye. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eckland. Aye. Eckland, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hurtas. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson. Johnson, aye. Johnson, aye. Representative Krisha. Krisha, aye. Krisha, aye. Representative Liebling. Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Mariani, excused. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash. Nash, no. Nash, no. Representative Nelson. Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor. Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, aye. O'Neill, aye. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Pinto. Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott? Aye. Scott, aye. Representative Sundin? 
Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. And Representative Hurtas? Hurtas, aye. Hurtas, aye. Madam Chair, that is 26 ayes and two nays. There have been 26 aye and two nays. The motion prevails in House File 4265. As amended, is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you, Vice Chair Olson. So up next is House File 3765 by Chair Hansen. The LCCMR bill. This bill came to us from the Environment and Natural Resource Committee. Chair Hansen, please move your bill um, and your amendment and begin. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I would move House File 3765 uh, be recommended to the General Register, and I have an amendment. Can you, um, well, okay, you have the uh, 8376 a amendment. Thank um, you, Madam Chair. Um, so we want to get that bill into shape, right, to present it, so are they... Would you like to explain the amendment, yeah, please? Yeah, I would. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, that amendment was a mouthful. So I, <laughs> uh, that amendment is uh, simpler than the, its title, and I would move the amendment. Uh, uh, members, the LCCMR bill, uh, what's in front of you is, are the recommendations that received as an amendment, 10 votes uh, in favor and seven votes against. Uh, it takes 12 votes to have a formal recommendation. Uh, what this uh, bill does is it uh, allocates money, appropriates money according to merit, where all of the projects that are before you had received an 11% cut from what they originally asked for. So they're all treated equally with the exception of one project, which was uh, the DNR's uh, money for uh, state trails, state parks for purchasing and holding and other properties. And in order to balance the money to the amount of money that's available, we had cut that uh, uh, several hundred thousand dollars. What the amendment does is it restores that. So uh, all the projects would be traded, treated equally. And I would ask for your support for the amendment. Okay. Now, are there any questions on the A2 amendment? Seeing none, um, all those in favor of the A2 amendment, amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Uh, Chair Hansen, please continue with your presentation of House File 3765 as amended. Thank you, Madam Chair. House File 3765 as amended is the LCCMR appropriations bill. As I described, uh, it is a merit-based uh, project proposal uh, that expends a little over $70 million. I do have uh, Ms. Becca Nash here from the LCCMR. If there were any technical questions about the bill, uh, the appropriation, uh, uh, the agreement has been made to run this separate from the omnibus bill you'll be hearing uh, later from the Environment Committee. Uh, we will be conferencing with the Senate. The Senate's proposal will be having uh, a bill that had received a 9-6 vote uh, and has a different approach where it uh, cuts uh, the projects that receive uh, higher scores more to fund projects at the lower level uh, that did not receive its highest score. So we will be conferencing that uh, separately and I ask for your support uh, to bring this to the floor and go to conference. This is the effort of the Citizen uh, Senate and House committees, uh, commission members, uh, and is brought to us uh, uh, through votes uh, throughout the year. We, will, we have just released the request for proposals for next year. Uh, it is an open process, and uh, if you would like to watch uh, several hours of hearings uh, per day on that, uh, that is how this was brought to us. So it is a merit-based, high-quality project proposals, and I ask for your support. All right, well, thank you for that. Any questions to the bill? Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Representative uh, Hanson. Thanks for bringing your bill forward. Um, I wanna, I'm not gonna go through everything, but I do wanna focus on subdivision five of the bill. It's a section that has the heading on a spreadsheet of environmental education. And there's two items that uh, kind of caught my attention. One is increasing K-12 student learning to develop environmental awareness appreciation and interest. And then there's another one that's labeled yes, exclamation point, 
students take action to complete eco projects. What um uh, kind of unusual for DNR to be dipping their toes into the Department of Education in our schools. What can you tell us about those? Representative Hansen. Chair Hansen. Thank you, uh, thank you Madam Chair. And uh, just the first one, the uh, and uh, Representative Garofalo, uh, you know, the wonderful thing about uh, this process is that there, it doesn't have to be the DNR that requests money. Uh, and so if you look at the environmental education, uh, that first one, the teacher field school stewardship through nature based education was actually the DNR in an agreement with Hamlin University. So Hamlin uh, came forward uh, in, in looking at doing work there. If you look at, the, I think the one you asked about increasing K-12 student awareness, uh, the DNR for an agreement with Osprey Wilds Environmental Learning Center and the other five accredited residential environmental learning centers. So uh, as you know, Representative Garofalo, uh, the fiscal agent is the pass through with the DNR, but really what you're seeing here uh, are entities such as Hamlin University, uh, the environmental learning centers. And what was unique about that environmental learning center, often we have individual environmental learning centers asking us for money and here's where they actually work together uh, uh, on this particular project uh, so that they're not duplicating. Uh, expanding access to wildlife learning bir bird by bird uh, that's uh, to the DNR that is one uh, where to engage young people from diverse communities in wildlife conservation uh, and again a uh, number uh, D, engaging a diverse public in environmental stewardship. That's working with Great River Greening. Uh, that's where the contract goes to. So I hope that answers your question, Representative Graflo. Uh, often you're using the DNR as the fiscal agent to pass through the money to make sure that they're managing the contracts with these entities to implement them. And so you do have environmental learning centers and other uh, local groups uh, that may be education-based but want to get into uh, environmental education and serve their clientele uh, and Minnesotans. Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Hansen. Uh, yeah, there's certainly, uh, especially these days, there's no there's no shortage of groups that seem to want to be getting into our schools and getting access to kids. Um, so I, I'm, I'm focusing on the spreadsheet here line 46 where it says yes exclamation point students take action to complete eco projects do you know um i'm sure you guys have a, a like one pager on that is that something you can email to me afterwards that i can review Madam Chair. Uh, Chair Hansen, yes uh, thank you uh, re yes representative Garofalo. if you look on the bill it's line 14.12 uh and it's 199,000 uh in the second year from the trust fund for an agreement with the Prairie Woods Environmental Learning Center in partnership with the Nay Nature Center and the Laurentian Environmental Center to empower Minnesota youth to connect with natural resource export experts. So it's connecting kids with experts uh, to identify ecological challenges and take action to complete innovative projects in their communities. That's the, the rider language in the bill is 14.12 through 14.23. Uh, so I'm sure they would, uh, you know, maybe make room for uh, old legislators to connect with environmental experts and identify ecological challenges. If you and I would like to do that. Oh well, Madam Garofalo. Chair, Madam Chair, Representative Hansen, since you are the dean and senior member of the Dakota County delegation, I think we'll leave that task uh, to you. So uh, I'll be voting no on your bill today. As always, I thank you for your efforts, and I uh, would encourage members of the committee to vote no as well. Thank you. All right. So I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, Sir Hansen, would you like to um, would you like to uh, do any closing comments? Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a good bill. Uh, I'd ask for your support. Uh, so we have a strong vote going into conference. So the Chair Hansen motion is before us. Um, is that House File 3765 as amended be recommended for placement on the general register? Ms. Anna, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright. Albright, no. Albright, no. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. 
Representative Eklund. Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, no. Hurtas, no. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson. Johnson, no. Johnson, no. Representative Krisha. Krisha, no. Krisha, no. Representative Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly. Lilly, aye. Lily, aye. Representative Mariani, excused. Representative Marquardt. Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Miller. Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash. Nash, no. Nash, no. Representative Nelson. Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor. Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto. Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Representative Schultz. Yes. Representative Scott. Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin. Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. Representative Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Madam Chair, that is 17 ayes and 11 nays. There have been 17 ayes and 11 nays. Um, ooh, let's see here. <laughs> the motion prevails in House File 3765 as amended is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you so much for that, Chair Hansen. So I want to thank you members for your attention today. The last bill on our agenda is House File 3805 by Representative Nash. This bill was heard in public safety, state government, and the Transportation Committee and was recalled to Ways and Means from the floor. Since the bill did travel through multiple finance committees and had a fiscal note, that had a fiscal impact over $3,000, I thought it was Putin to have the customary review in Ways and Means. So I wanna thank you, Representative Nash, for your work on this bill and presenting at this extra committee stop. So uh, would you please move your bill and tell us about your bill with a focus on the fiscal impact. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would move that 3805 come before the committee and be uh, moved to the general register. Okay. The bill is very, very brief. The fiscal note actually is longer than the bill. So the bill would suns would remove the sunset date uh, for the Capital Area Security Commission. And uh, the fiscal impact for our committee today is $4,000 that has been being absorbed by the Department of Transportation and will continue to be absorbed by the department um, moving forward. For those unfamiliar with the uh, Capital Area Security, uh, it is a, a committee composed of outside private uh, sector folks, folks from the pub private uh, public sector, Department of Administration, Department of Public Safety, and many others that uh, work with two uh, senators from each party, uh, two representatives each from a party that uh, work to make sure that the Capitol area, not just the Capitol building, but the Capitol complex is kept safe. And members, given the tumultuous last number of years uh, where we saw many uh, folks deployed to keep our capital area secure, uh, we feel that it is prudent to continue this work and continue the, the standing committee without a future sunset. So I would stand for any questions. Thank you. So there was no amendments that were pre-filed um, and a complete fiscal note was provided for your reference. Uh, with a cause of sort by the Department of Administration. Um, do we have any questions to the bill? All right. Seeing no questions, any closing comment, Representative Nash? Thank you for your support, for your support and I would renew my motion that 3805 be referred to the General Register. Thank you. So the next uh, motion before us is that House File 3805 be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Anna, would you please take the roll? Chair Moran. Aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. 
Graffalo, aye. Graffalo, aye. Representative Albright. Albright, aye. Albright, aye. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eckland. Aye. Eckland, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Representative Fritz. Representative Hassan, one more time. Hassan, no. Hassan, no. Representative Hurtas? Hurtas, aye. Hurtas, aye. Representative Hornstein? Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson? Johnson, aye. Johnson, aye. Representative Krisha? Krisha, aye. Krisha, aye. Representative Liebling? Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lily? Lily, aye. Lily, aye. Representative Mariani, excused. Representative Marquardt? Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Miller? Miller, aye. Miller, aye. Representative Nash? Nash, aye. Nash, aye. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, aye. O'Neill, aye. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Pinto? Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher? Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Representative Schultz? Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott? Scott, aye. Scott, aye. And Representative Sundin? Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. So that is 27 ayes and one nay. There have been 27 ayes and one nay. The motion prevails. House file 3805 is, is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you, Representative Nash. So members, that will conclude our business for the day. Uh, I want to thank you for your work today. And after we get back from the break, I just want to reiterate again that I expect that we will be meeting more frequently to hear the supplemental finance bills that are coming from the finance committee. Um, and it will be a hybrid um, hearing. Uh, Representative Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. And that was to my question. I just wanted to clarify the way that I heard you say it, and I think you said it again, but can I assume that any meetings that we have after Easter break, starting at that point, they will be in person or a hybrid sort of uh, setting that you're talking about? That is correct, Representative Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, any other questions? With that, our meeting is adjourned. Have a